I'm Dr. J, and this is my guide to permutations with replacement. As usual, down below in the description, there's a link to a PDF version of these slides. In a previous video, we talked about four basic ways of counting or, or computing combinatorics. They were combinations, permutations, combinations with replacement, and permutations with replacement. This video is the first in a four video series that delves into depth on each of those four basic counting methods in order to provide you intuition behind the formula for each of those uh, counting methods. And secondly, to provide you more examples of the formulas being used. This is a guide to permutations with replacement. So we'll be talking about that formula, which is n to the k. And we'll also be talking about using that formula to determine how many passwords there are in a given password policy. In order to get the intuition behind the formula, we're going to introduce something called the fundamental rule of counting. The fundamental rule of counting says that if there are A ways of doing one thing and B ways of doing another thing, then there are A times B ways of doing the first thing and the second thing. As an example, let's consider uh, rolling a six-sided die and flipping a coin. Well, there are, for a standard six-sided die, six ways for that die to come up. And there are two ways for the coin to come up. And therefore, if you ask yourself how many ways are there for the die and the coin to appear, there are six times two or 12 different ways for those two things to occur simultaneously. A tastier example, imagine yourself walking to an ice cream shop and you find in this ice cream shop there are 12 different flavors, there are five different toppings and three different ice cream cones. And you asking yourself, well, how many different combinations are there of ice cream, cones and toppings? Well, there are 12 times 5 times 3, or 180 different ways to have your ice cream from that ice cream shop. Now we're going to use this fundamental rule of counting idea to derive or to provide the intuition behind the formula for permutations with replacement. As a reminder, a permutation with replacement is an ordered set of k elements drawn from a set of n elements where the elements can be repeated. And we call that with replacement because we are going to take the element out of the set, but then we're going to put it back up into the set to be retaken again. Permutation here refers to the fact that order does matter. Now to get the intuition behind the formula, we're going to be thinking about the process by which we get that set, the set that we're interested in. And the process is this, the process says, look, how many ways are there to get the first element? How many choices do you have when choosing that first element? Well, there are n items in the set that we're drawing from, so there are n ways to choose that first element. But now, because this is with replacement, we took take that item we got and we put it back up in the set, and we say, now, how many ways are there to draw the second element? Well, there's, again, n elements in the set, so there are n different ways to draw that second element out of that set. The pattern here is pretty obvious. It's going to be n every time, so when you get down to the kth element, because we've done with replacement every time, there are now n ways to choose that kth element. And so now if we ask ourselves the question, how many ways are there to choose the first element and the second element and the third element and all the way to the kth element? Well, that's just the fundamental rule of counting. We just take n times n times n and do that k times. Fortunately, we have some shorthand for this. We just call it n raised to the kth power. And that is our formula for permutations with replacement where n is the number of items in the original set, and k is the number of items in our final set. So now if we move on and talk about some password policies. So here's one of the simplest password policies. Suppose that the policy says that we have a password that has to be 10 digits long, and we can only use lowercase English letters. Well, in this case, we have an initial set that has our 26 lowercase English letters. We have our final set, which is the length of the password, that's 10. And this is a permutation with replacement because for passwords, order matters. And we are replacing uh, the items, that is, we can reuse lowercase letters from the English alphabet to construct our password. The formula then tells us that we have n to the k, or 26 to the 10th possible different passwords with this policy. If we write this with base 10, we have 10 to the 14th unique passwords under this policy. Now, most password policies are a little bit more complicated than this. In particular, they make it more complicated by one, allowing you to increase the length, and number two, increasing the number of digits that can be used. 
So let's look at these two quickly. If we have a 20 digit, but still only lowercase password, then we have 26 to the 20th power, or about 10 to the 28th unique passwords under this new policy. If instead we keep the same length, so it's still 10 digits, but now we allow lowercase and uppercase letters, we now have 52 raised to the 10th power, or about 10 to the 17th unique passwords. All right, so password policies typically, though, don't require a fixed length. Most password policies say, well, it has to at least be this long, but really it can be not quite as large as you want. Usually the password policies are limited by uh, how many digits it's going to be recorded in memory or on hard disk space. And so really what we're looking for is we're looking for a policy that says, hey, passwords can be anywhere in this particular range. And so I'll talk about how to calculate the number of passwords under that kind of policy. And usually they allow more than just uppercase and lowercase letters. They allow numbers and they allow some set of digits. So as an example, suppose that there's a policy that says, hey, you can have a password that has uppercase and lowercase letters, as well as numbers, and this set of digits, which happens to be, or symbols, this, these symbols happen to be 30 of them. And the password length can be anywhere from, say, 8 to 20. Well, how do we determine how many passwords are in this policy? And the way to break this down is to say, all right, well, the password policy uh, can be anywhere from 8 to 20, so we can figure out how many passwords of length 8 there are, then how many of length 9, then how many of length 10, and so forth, all the way up to 20. And once we find each of those individual number of passwords, we can just add them up. All right, so if we do that, if we say, okay, how many passwords of length 8 are there? Well, there's 92 to the 8th, where that 92 comes because there are 52 letters in the English language, that is, if we just make a distinction between lowercase and uppercase, there are 10 numbers and there are 30 symbols, that's a total of 92. The password length is 8, so it's 92 raised to the 8th power. And we say, how many of length 9? Well, that's 92 to the 9th power. And if we just continue on, then we have 92 to the 19th for a 19 uh, length password, and we have 92 to the 20 for a 20 digit password. Now, if you write this in base 10, here we have uh, 10 to the 16th plus 10 to the 18th plus and so on until we get to 10 to the 37th plus 10 to the 39th. But if you think about this, the 10 to the 39th is a hundred times bigger than the 10 to the 37th. Or said another way, that 10 to the 37th is only adding 1% more passwords. And if you work back, you find that the next lower, like the number of passwords that have length 18, right, is about 100 times smaller again. And so uh, this sum right here can be approximated to a first degree by just saying, taking the number of passwords of length 20, that is 10 to the 39th power. And that will be approximately now how many passwords you have in this policy as a whole. Now, it's a little bit hard to understand when we're looking at these uh, numbers, how many passwords there are, so it might be helpful to visualize what's going on. So here's a graphical depiction of the number of allowed passwords under a number of different password policies. Here we have the password length on the x-axis, we have the number of passwords on the y-axis, and we have sets of different allowable digits as the, different four, the four different lines. The solid line is lowercase only, the next line up includes uppercase letters, the next line up from that includes the uppercase letters and numbers, and the final line allows you both uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers, and 30 different symbols. And so what might be of interest here is you might have a design uh, for a website, say, where you have, uh, you want to have a certain number of passwords, that is a number, a password difficulty that say is about 10 to the 29th. And so what you can do is you can look at this graphic here and you can look at that bottom sort of more solid gray line and you can say, well, how many passwords are there that are have that length? And you can make a decision about how what policy you want in terms of what digits are allowed by looking at the lines as they cross that horizontal line. So for instance, if you only want to allow lowercase letters, then you need a password length of about 20. If you want to allow all lowercase, uppercase numbers and symbols, then you only need a password that's about of length 15. Right? So this kind of graphic can help you determine what password policy you want uh, for a website or for some other purpose. All right, to summarize what we talked about today, we talked about the fundamental rule of counting, 
We talked about intuition behind the formula for permutation with replacement. We applied that formula to a number of different password policies to determine how many different passwords there were. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is the first in a four-part video series uh, discussing the different basic methods for counting. Uh, in the next three videos, we're going to go into depth on the others, so combinations, permutations, and combinations with replacement. Uh, I hope you like this video. If you do, feel free to uh, subscribe. Otherwise, uh, well, for everybody, have a great one.